Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Work hard, get dope. I can't get no sleep, please make my life more simple. But I wouldn't trade a thing for what I have. I go hard, do what I need to make it last. They say the good die young, I hope I'm back. Cheers to my past. Today we're going to install diamond coat siding on my... Uh, on my garage project and we're going to do a vertical um we're going to do a vertical siding let's see if they have some uh the color we chose is onyx and the siding the style is vertical um let's see product arch trim board and bat let's see if they give us a gallery okay so you see this right here in this picture you can see the siding right there it's a vertical siding and you got your window trim and you got some corner pieces that's the that's what we chose for our garage. Now the reason I chose this was my local builder. He convinced me that this was one of the best products for for maintenance, and they had a 30-year warranty. Basically, you you face nail these, and um, you use a uh, a ring shank nail. Um, I be, believe it's a t around a two-inch ring shank nail, and I use a coil a coil nailer. And then what you do is you, as you go, you touch up the heads of these galvanized ring shank nails with, with the paint that they give you. And so basically you, you start and you start putting this whole thing together and you end up, uh, you end up by the time you're done, it's finished and you don't have to paint it. It's got a 30 year warranty from fading. Um, and you know it's supposed to be a really good product now I'm not a professional on diamond coat building products I, I'm basically taking the advice of my um, my local lumber salesman but today I'll take you I'm gonna I'm basically gonna side this whole garage I've already I've already installed the soffit and um, I did do a video on how to install that by yourself I am doing the whole thing by myself which is kind of a lot for old guy but um, yeah, I need. I don't have help out here where I'm at, and uh, I need to get it done. Winter's coming, so I I got to just keep plugging along. So today I'm going to um, I'm going to put together. Um, now this video is actually going to be a, probably a good two or three week long video because doing it by myself is taking me a little time to do it. But I'll I'll show you glimpses of of the process, and also I'll show you how to convert your your 12 inch um, chop saw to be able to cut 16 inch um, 16 inch wide boards and um, I'll take you through that process and yeah let's have a little fun and try to get this job done this isn't it's not as fun as some of the projects that I like to do but it is rewarding after it's done um, I recently finished the back of the garage, which actually has the most work because it has so many windows. I, I, um, I thought it was a good idea to let in natural light, so I put eight eight windows in the back of my garage. But when you have to trim out, um, when you're putting up your vertical siding and you hit a window every three feet, three or four feet, and you got to you know trim that out, and and it's a slow process. I think it took me a week. To do the back of the garage um, but I'll show you some pictures of it and uh, anyway yeah let's uh, let's install some diamond coat building products if you've if you've dealt with diamond coat before and um, you let me know in the comments what you think of it I'm hoping that it lasts a long time I, I did pay extra money for this product uh, it was not the cheapest product I think for all the material the vertical siding, the soffit material, and the soffit material comes. It's it has it has the the vents already in, already cut into it. Um, so the soffit material, the siding, the the one by two bats, the four inch corners, nails. Um, I did get I did get bigger pieces for putting the inserts into my aluminum garage doors. And I think altogether I spent probably fifteen thousand dollars on the material, which isn't cheap. But if it does, if it does do what it says and it's a thirty-year product, 
I, you know, I won't have to paint it in my lifetime. So hopefully that'll work out. I have enough maintenance on my log home. Um, my log home, it's a constant. Um, when you have all wood home, it's a lot of maintenance. Anyway, I wanted the garage to be a little more where I didn't have to maintain it at all, you know. Um, and that's what I've kind of gone for on this project. Anyway, let's get started. I'll st we'll start installing the siding. Cut a 16 inch wide board using a chop saw. This is a Hercules um, compound chop saw, 12 inch double bevel sliding compound miter saw, Hercules. And I really, I, I really like this chop saw, but one of the problems I have is so this is this is my uh, my chop saw station that I built. And the siding that I have coming is 16 feet long. And it's, it's 16 feet long. That's why I have this big table. But it's also 16 inches wide. So if I was to try to cut this on this chop saw, it, wouldn't be, it would only cut 14 inches. It would not cut all the way through. So today I'm going to show you how to, how to use a 14 inch chop saw made by Hercules to cut a 16 inch board and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, the first thing you're going to do to accomplish this is you're going to remove this fence. And basically, you got a couple stops in the back that you need to unscrew. Slide these out. Then you got a star star wrench. You're going to it has four big screws holding this fence down. You're going to take these out. So right off the bat, Right off the bat, you can see that this is made to cut 14 inches. Right there is the 14 inch mark on a cross cut. Now, if you're, if you're at, a, at a 45, you're only gonna be able to cut probably 12 inches because of the... Now, it might still cut 14, we'll have to see. But, so in my case, my siding is 16 inches. So if you look at this blade, when it comes all the way to the 14 up here, now if you look, it, it goes actually two more inches to the back. So what you need to do is, and I made a mark right there already, and what, I, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna remove this fence. Now what I've done is I basically pre-cut this piece this is a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood, and I pre-cut it at 18 inches. So it's, so the whole plywood is 18 inches. And then I cut a two inch, a new fence at two inches. And then basically I use my mark back here and I put that on the mark 
and then I squared this this fence up with with the blade and now I have four bolt holes to go in those same bolt holes and then what I do is I screw this fence down into those same bolt holes from the existing fence the most important thing when you're setting this this piece up is that this fence right here is square with your cut and what I did was I pre-cut this piece and I glued and finished nailed this uh, piece of MDF fence on the back okay so now you've got your now you've got your new wood fence on there with your with your fence that's squared off but now you have now you have 16 inches to the to the front of that
simple.